Alright, so the last time I was in this house, I was helping Rebecca Black move out of it. I did that for years and years, actually. Um, just the short list of people that I helped move in this town. I helped uh, Sammy and Shelly move. I helped Jamie move at least three times. I helped uh, Rebecca move. I helped Shauna Verbis move. Um, helped Lana and Amanda move twice. I helped Miss Jerry move. Most of the time, not in chapel, because she moved on to Alliance and then to Montana, and I helped her move a lot. She kept on moving in with guys that were abusive, and then later on she'd move back in with them and say they weren't actually abusive. That Lana was controlling her. All right. You make your own decisions, Miss Jerry. If these men were so bad, you should have stayed away from them and not moved back in with them. But that's not the point here. Um, my little sister was beating the hell out of her dog one year. And I slammed her down onto an air mattress for it. She said I broke her neck and... So I went across the street, I grabbed my mom's vehicle, and I was going to drive it off of a cliff, except we're in Chapel, Nebraska. There's really no cliffs here to drive off of. So I drove to Jenny Wright's house and had her call the cops to come pick me up. And that was Sheriff Jeff Ortiz. We call him Taco. He's not a sheriff anymore, but uh, there's a guy named Robert Warnick, and he threatened my life yesterday or the day before, and all over rumors. He thought I was stalking him to kill him for his ex-wife or ex-girlfriend. Her name's Nicole McIntosh. This is Rayanna Ingersoll's, tw uh, not twin sister, but Rayanna Ingersoll's sister. Rayanna's a pretty heavy alcoholic, but her sister, um, I guess she's a social worker now. I don't have much respect for social workers. They uh, end up putting a lot of kids in more danger than they would have been living with their parents. But also, there's a lot of children who would be better off in the system than with their parents, and the police keep sending them back to their parents. You get abused by your parents, you have two choices here in Nebraska. You can go into the system, or you can go back and live with your parents. You don't really have any rights here. CPS doesn't really care and the police don't really care. Just like about anywhere else in America, we have police that are involved in human trafficking. We have police who, uh, well, let me tell you the story of Charles Warnick, Chuck. This guy was always good to me. So was Robert. And they're cousins. And, uh, Taco, there was a standoff with Charles. And if he'd have wanted to kill Taco, Taco would be dead. That's guaranteed. Chuck was a pretty damn good shot. Um, so while the standoff was going on, people were wanting to know where his grandma was. Now, I said her name was Pearl, and it's actually Coral Ann, or Coral. And uh, I went down and got her and let her know what was going on, and she went down there and 
me and Jeff Baldridge, we got in the vehicle and went down there. Um, like I said, Charles had always been good to me. Well, when we got there, we heard a gunshot, and we see Taco running over to the ambulance, and he screams at the top of his lungs, Drop that son of a bitch. Um, next day, we found out Charles was dead. Might have been the day after, and they claimed that Charles had shot himself in the head. Whether that's true or not, that man didn't need to be shot. But that's not the point either, is it? Jennifer Wright um, married Zach Richmond, and I don't know if they're married anymore. I know she's still got his last name, though. And I also remember she was never mean to me. Um, she wasn't really somebody who went out of her way to hang out with me, but she was somebody that I was always comfortable with because she was nice to me. Um, she was also pretty straightforward. If she doesn't want you around, she'll tell you. Um, as far as tonight went... I was supposed to get a two block ride to here so that I would have a place to stay for the night. And, you know, I'm still here, so I mean, I guess we're good. But the bartender who was working tonight, she was trying to do the responsible thing and trying to make sure that everybody got home safely and she was going to drive everyone home. Um,. Some of the gentlemen here had a, a safety concern with her taking a drunk man home. I, I'd be willing to ride with anybody who needs to take people home so that there's no safety issues there. I'd be willing to do that every single night, matter of fact. I know what it's like to be in a vehicle with a volatile male who's been drinking, who may or may not expect things and as a result I would rather be a sober passenger with a sober driver to drive these people home every night <clears throat> make sure they don't try to get into their vehicle and drunk drive um, the guy who was driving tonight he well the guy we were following he was driving like way into the ditch and kicking up a lot of dirt and fish tailing in the ditch and it was scary. The guy that I was riding with couldn't really stay in his lane but at least he wasn't going in the ditch. We were supposed to drop this guy off in Julesburg and then turn around and come back but instead the driver wanted to go to Big Springs so we went to Big Springs and well, he sobered up a bit because we were on the road for a while, and we also pulled over to the side of the road for a while, and I got a free pack of cigarettes and a free biscuit for breakfast and free stuff, right? So it must not be all bad. Well, it really is all bad. We didn't need to go to Big Springs. Matter of fact, we shouldn't have ever left Chapel, Nebraska, and that man who went to Julesburg should have never tried that either. His vehicle is sitting on the side of the road between Chapel, Nebraska and Julesburg, Colorado, because he, he was going to kill himself. That's how bad his driving was. If we'd have let him go another mile, we'd have been pulling a corpse out of the ditch. Then again, we could have ended up corpses too because the two people who were driving had no business driving and me, my driver's license expired while I was in Virginia. It expired on my birthday. I got a great birthday present though. I got 
to get on a bus on my birthday and go see Jamie and the boy. Something I didn't think would ever happen again in my lifetime. The thing is, people do stupid things every day. Candace Bondurant, we lost her older brother, Chance. Chance Dale. His real name was Chance Hatfield, but he was raised by Rick Dale and took his last name, same as Candace did. Chance was driving home from Julesburg one night with Aaron Stegeman and Chance's girlfriend, and they went off the road and they killed Chance and his girlfriend, Aaron. Aaron walked to a farmhouse to get some help. I went to Chance's funeral and I didn't go to another funeral after that until my grandmother's funeral. I wouldn't have come back to Chapel, Nebraska if it hadn't been for Rory's funeral. But now that I'm back, I, I remember why I left. I also remember a lot of the good times and a lot of the good people. I mean, most of the people that I, I ditched here, that I, I had to leave because they couldn't stay sober, they got all messed up on methamphetamines, like Matt Worley and Adam Garrett and Case Layton Morse and his mom Shelly and so many others. Rihanna got into those things too at the same time and the same with Jamie Curtis and same thing with Jackie McKenzie. They all just got into meth. And it wasn't for me. And because of their meth issues, I was having to deal with people who have way worse issues. People like Jason Vogt. Jason Vogt has always been a bully for as long as I've known him. You know, at that time, when I first left Chapel, Nebraska, there's also... Um, Amanda Ingeline, who was getting all messed up on meth. And Drake Chambers, who was getting all messed up on meth. And he had his girlfriend, who literally didn't leave his room for six months. Her name was Chantel. There was a lot of people that got into that meth. And I couldn't handle it. Big J got married, and we were all excited for him. But his wife was on meth, and she was selling his stuff to pay for meth. I told on her. I told Jason what she was doing. And he had me go with him to get the car, because it was his. And... He told her it was over. Everybody in town knew that she was doing this. And little Jay, because there's two Jepson families. There's big Jason Jepson, who is the one who was married. And then there's little Jason Jepson, who is a meth head. And little Jason was married to Polly Olson's daughter. And... Polly Olson's always been good to me. Same thing with her daughter. Little Jay, he uh, was major in the meth. He just couldn't quit for the life of him. And he had a baby on the way. And he had a meth rock on his rock shelf because he liked to collect rocks. 
and he used to brag every time I'd go over there about how his pregnant wife walks by that crack rock or that meth rock every day and doesn't even know what it is. So little Jason ended up getting really messed up on meth and shooting at his wife, Ashley Olson, or Ashley Jepson at the time. And that was all she wrote. So he didn't get hardly any time in jail. That's pretty common around here. When my uncle Greg tried to kill his ex-wife or his ex-girlfriend Loretta, he ran into the back of her vehicle with his truck. And then he got out and he told me where he was standing um, while we were working on the car. And when he told me where he was standing, I went and stood there and I looked at the window. There's two bullet holes there and there's the headrest right behind it. What my uncle had done is he ran into the back of her vehicle with his truck and then he walked around to the front and he tried to shoot her in the head twice. He didn't spend very much time in jail for that. I spent more time in jail than he did and I never tried to kill anybody. Imagine that. But I come from a long line of violent people. In Nebraska, pretty much everybody's drunk all the damn time. I've been to the, the bar four different nights since I got here, and one of the people there has between a $40 and an $80 bill every night, and one of the other people there has between a $30 and $40 bill every night. And I'm pretty sure by the end of the week, I'll hear one or the other of those people tell me about how they're always broke because of minorities or because of women or because of homeless people. That's a lot of money to spend on alcohol. That's more money on alcohol in one night than I've spent in the last decade on alcohol. Past two decades on alcohol, I should say. Because by the time I quit drinking, people were buying my alcohol for me. I, I hadn't bought alcohol in about two years by the time I quit drinking. And I quit drinking at 21. This is a meth town, just like most towns in America. It's nasty and it's gross, and the ones who aren't on meth are on alcohol. And people who are drinking or on meth, they do stupid things, and they argue about stupid things. I used to save lives, and now I'm... Well, I'm basically a mooch. I mean, there isn't much I'm able to do for myself because I have nonstop panic attacks. And I'm constantly surrounded by idiots. But I also have good people that I know and love. Like both Jepson families. I love little Jay despite the dumbass that he is. I love Brandon, despite the fact that he's as spoiled as he is. I love Gary, and I love Mary. I love Dana. I love Rory. And Jason. And Cammy. All their kids. Between the two Jepson families, I, I felt love that I didn't get from my own family. Right now, though, I got a more important goal, and that's to get Alicia safe, to get her off the drugs. 
And I know that's not my choice or my decision, but the thing is, as long as she pretends like I would hurt her, people are going to do terrible things to me. It's not her fault that her family are such terrible people. It is her decision not to come forward and be honest, though. And if she can't come forward and be honest, she should at least shoot me. Or she should, uh, go to the courts. She obviously has no problems lying to the courts. She can go to the courts and tell those very same lies. And have me put in prison and I won't fight it. They just need to lock me up forever because I'm not... I'm not somebody who copes with this crap by ignoring it and getting into the bottle. I'm not somebody who ignores this stuff and starts injecting heroin or snorting cocaine or snorting hair meth or any of that stuff. I'm somebody who gets sober, gets driven, and tries to do something about it. Meanwhile, it don't matter without somebody in my corner who is willing to at least look at what's going on. With Robert Warnick and threatening me the other day, when I looked him up, I, uh, well, I was told that he was a registered sex offender, and I looked him up, sure enough, Nebraska Sex Offender Registry. This is really what it's like. I don't fit in here in America because I'm not an idiot, I'm not an alcoholic, I'm not a meth addict, I'm not a heroin user, I'm not a pill popper, I just simply don't fit in. I'm not good looking, I'm not rich, so I'm not human enough for you. I don't act the way that you want me to, so I must be a terrible person. I can't say I saved more lives than Jesus, because I don't know how many lives he saved. But I do know that I literally saved lives. Literally. Natalie saved my life. Now, if I'd have killed myself, That might have been enough back in 2016 for her to kill herself too. She told me that she'd wanted to kill herself a hundred times and thinking of me was the reason that she didn't. She also told me why she wanted to kill herself because of her family and their opinions and the things that they continued to do to her. Now Natalie's dead. Just like Chance is dead. And Tiny is dead. And Janine is dead. Onyx is dead. Quake Cox, he's dead too. Anna's dead. I know that when Alicia dies, I'm not going to be able to handle it. I can't handle just the thought of it. So I want to go first. Nobody will help me do that, and I can't do it myself because I keep having this hope that maybe... Maybe somebody will understand who can actually do something. Probably not, though. So it's, uh, probably close to four in the morning. I can't sleep. I can't stop worrying about Alicia. I can't.
can't stop worrying about Christina. I can't stop worrying about Rabbit. I can't stop worrying about Todd. I can't stop worrying about Osha. At least there are still people here who remember me for who I am and not for who I was made out to be. The Jefferson family is still here. They're still good to me. They still treat me like I'm a person. They include me. I used to go to the Martindales and to the Jepsons every year for Thanksgiving and for Christmas and for the 4th of July. I know who's good to me and I'm good to them. But a lot of times your words are just too dismissive and you don't understand how hurtful it is. The Martindales never understood what it's like not to have a family because they've always had family. When they needed help, they'd go to family and they'd ask for help, and they'd get it. And then they always forget that I was there for things like that when they tell me things like, well, Schwartz, I had to do it all myself, like, well, you did.